Darian Fenton. Mr Speaker, well, first of all, I want to thank the Green Party and the Māori Party and, of course, my colleagues in the Labor Party for their contributions and support. I do appreciate very much their understanding that this is a situation of basic fairness, that the Kiwi way is to treat people fairly, particularly when they're vulnerable. I also want to put on record my thanks to the many people who have been in touch to tell me their stories or to offer their support. I want to acknowledge all of the unions and organisations who have backed the Redundancy Protection Bill and who will continue to fight alongside Labor to ensure that this issue will be on the agenda at the next election. I want to mention them by name. The Council of Trade Unions, the Engineers and Printing Manufacturing Union, the National Distribution Union, my own union, the Service and Food Workers Union, the Dairy Workers Union, Unite Union, uh, Rail and Maritime Union, FinSec, the Maritime Union, the Public Service Association, the Nurses Organisation, the NZIT Rearoa, and the Wellington People's Centre. And I want the government members to know that together, these organisations represent 350,000 workers plus their families. And today, National and Act have sent a strong message to all of those people that they don't care about them, that they don't care about them. Now, I also want to respond to the pathetic defence from the other side um, that we had nine years. I mentioned in, in, the, in my first speech that actually Labor did an awful lot about redundancy. But it wasn't a priority because people were not losing their jobs in the droves that they are now. We, we did heaps. We put uh, insolvency as a prior, uh, in, in insolvency situations. We put redundancy as a priority. Uh, and then we also uh, cut the tax rate on redundancy payments, and we set up the advisory group because we also want to do things based on good evidence. On good evidence, and that's what the restructuring. That's what the advisory group uh, was about. So don't you know, go on about we had nine years because, Mr Speaker, Labor did a lot and there was a lot to do and there will always be more to do. And the fact is there will be more ideas that this government, that, that, that Labor Party has and will take into the next election. Right. Mr Speaker, this government has failed working people again. It's failed to take off the, um, the harsh edges of the recession, as uh, John Key promised they would. Wages are in decline, unemployment is skyrocketing, and workers can look forward to no support from this government. When this bill was drawn from the ballot last year, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I deliberately postponed its first reading. I wanted to make sure that the bill was not taken lightly by political parties, but unfortunately the speech from David Bennett shows that they have utter contempt uh, for the issues facing workers today. I wanted to make sure that the bill was not taken lightly, as I said, I wanted to give National and ACT and other parties a real chance to show that they were prepared to listen to working people and their families when they say that not enough has been done for workers facing redundancy. Actually, I don't think they bothered, even though there were more than 120,000 of these postcards, 120,000 that went to John Key's office. I know they would have gone in the rubbish bin. But, you know, what about the cost to workers? I mean, let's talk about the cost of business, yes, but what about the cost to workers and the cost to their families? Now, redundancy entitlements are about recognising that the loss of a job is not the fault of a worker, that they provided their labour in good faith to an employer and they have a risk of not finding a compar comparable job. And we've had examples in the debate today. And it also recognises uh, the impact generally on the earning capacity of the worker. But redundancy entitlements can also act as a deterrent, and I think some of my colleagues have referred to this, where an employer might otherwise make a, a worker redundant uh, without due consideration. And, for example, I'm aware uh, many of the employers in the nine-day fortnight programme the nine-day fortnight program, yes, I know, but many of them joined that. That was the cost of redundancy, of making their workers redundant, that made them sign up to it. It acted as a, uh, a deterrent. It wasn't John Key's brilliance. It was the fact that there was something standing in the way of just being able to send people down the road. Also, Mr Speaker, we, I've noted that in the last year, um, personal grievances in relation to redundancy have doubled. That is the consequence of not having certainty in the law around uh, redundancy. Mr Speaker, I want to say that the cleaners that work in this parliament have no redundancy payments in their agreement. They have a specific clause that says they don't get anything. This is legal under the current situation and common. But all of us in this chamber 
can be re get made redundant in the election, or can be made redundant in the election, but we get Order. paid three months' salary. Mr Speaker, expired. this government has let them, the workers down and let down all Kiwi workers. Thank you. I'll put the question, and the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. The noes have it. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 58 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 43 in favour. Green Party. Nine votes in favour. Act New Zealand. Five votes opposed. Māori Party. Iri Mangapoti Tautoho. Progressive. United Future. One vote in favour. Oh, sorry, sorry, my apologies. One vote opposed. You made an hour. The ayes are 57, the noes are 64. The motion is not agreed to. Point of order, Darren Fenton. Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table a redundancy notice to the Honourable John Key, uh, saying that he will receive no notice and no redundancy pay because the law says he's not entitled. It's not, uh, it's not an acceptable uh, document to be tabled. Call Government Order of the Day number... Oh, no, sorry, Members. <laughs> My apologies. Call Members Order of the Day number two. Smart meters, consumer choice.